What's up guys, back in the shed again, working on the Kubota. Um, now that I finally got it all back together, it's time to take it all back apart again. <laughs> so today what we got going on is we're finally gonna do the fuel filter slash water separator mod. Um, what you will need to do this mod is your fuel filter slash water separator. Um, the part number for the one that I got, this is off an L-Series Kubota tractor. The part number is 15521 dash four three zero one five um that is the part number if you just type in on ebay or amazon kubota and then do a dash one five five two one this filter should come right up for you guys there's an aftermarket company making these you can get them for about 45 bucks i bought the original kubota one and the way you can tell the difference is this nipple here will be all aluminum and on the aftermarket one it'll be like a brass nipple and then the other way you can tell is the OEM Kubota filter has writing, you know, like instructions on the fuel bowl. I know it's kind of hard to see, but there is instructions on the fuel bowl. Um, so that's a couple ways you could tell. Also, the Kubota filter will be about $20 more. So I think I paid, I think I paid 60 bucks for this shipped to my door. The only downside of this filter is that it doesn't have a water drain on the bottom. So if you see water in it, you have to unscrew the entire bowl and drain it out or dump it. Um, it does not have a valve on the bottom like the raker does. Um, there are a couple other options that you guys can go with. The one main option that I see a lot of guys going with is the raker fuel filter. Um, the part number on that is 120AT. That is another good filter to use, and it does have the water drain uh, petcock on the bottom. I didn't go with that one because I like to keep everything, you know, OEM Kubota if I can. I, I, I think it's nice to have, you know, just an OEM Kubota part on my Kubota tractor. Um, nothing against the raker though. I also like the fact that this has a clear bowl where I can see everything. Um, I can see the filter. I can see, you know, what's inside it where the raker has like a steel filter with um, some of them have a metal bowl on the bottom and some have a clear bowl, but it doesn't show you a whole lot. So that was one of my reasons for not going with it. They're about the same size, I believe. And I believe that's pretty much the only differences between the two. So check both of them out. See which one you want to go with. If you do go with the Raker, make sure you get a Parker Raker. Um, Parker, I think, is the company that makes the Raker fuel filter water separators. Um, so if you don't see Parker written somewhere on the filter or on the housing or on a box, it's probably not a legitimate Raker filter. And it's probably made by some Chinese company and it'll end up leaking. Um, I hear horror stories about those Chinese rakers and the gaskets start leaking and the plastic gets brittle on the bowls and they crack and they just, they're nothing but problems. So do not get the Chinese one, even though they're tempting at $19. You guys, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the Tractor Tech channel. I meant to give him a shout out during the recording of this video, but I forgot to. So I'm doing it now. This guy has a Kubota BX, and he also has a Kubota Grand L. And this guy has a lot of great content on his channel, but the main reason I wanted to point him out was because he has a couple Kubota BX Raker fuel filter install videos. Um, the one video he does on his own tractor without a loader, and then he also does a video installing a Raker on one of his customers' Kubota BXs, which has a loader on it. So yeah, if you guys haven't seen this guy yet, jump over to his channel and check him out, and subscribe if you haven't already. So anyway, let's move on to do this mod. You will need that. You will need about six to eight feet of uh, 5 16 hose. Um, I got some Gates fuel line here. Make sure it's fuel line because um, you don't want to use regular vacuum hose because the diesel will swell and deteriorate the hose. Um, you will also need a 5 16 double bar bend fitting. Um, you know, it's got a barb on each side. You will need that to connect your new fuel filter to your existing lift pump. Um, also, you are going to need at least four to five 5 16 inch fuel line clamps. Um, I got five of them just in case. Four or five should do it. You could probably reuse a couple of the other ones that come off of the old filter. For tools, you're going to need probably a set of pliers. You're going to need a set of hose pinch off tools. So this pinches off the hose and locks it so that the fuel will not drain out of the tank. Um, you will also need a nut driver with a 5 16 end. Um, I would also get a quarter inch end, depending on what size clamps Kubota ended up using. I got mine on a ratchet, quarter inch. Um, aside from that, that should be about everything you need. Um, you're also going to need some kind of steel because you're going to have to build a bracket to come off the side of your loader bracket. You could use angle iron. This is two by two here. I'm probably not going to end up using any of these pieces as I had originally planned to. Um, I ended up going to the hardware store. And I bought myself a piece of eighth inch by three inch wide flat stock. 
Um, I went with eighth inch because for one, it's firm enough to be able to hold this filter in place, but yet I think it'll be easy enough for me to bend so I can bend the 90 where I want it so I could have that angle to catch this mount. So I think it'll be easy for me to bend it, but yet it'll be stable enough to hold that filter in place. All right, guys, now that I got the explaining out of the way, let me take the hood stack out, take the hood bonnet off, and we'll get to work. Okay, so the first thing I gotta do is pull out my hood stack. Just as simple as that. Pop the hood. Loosen up your bonnet bolts. Use that plastic strap for the hood. And then pull your bonnet off. Now we can get at the side of the engine here where we need to work. Also gonna fire it up and get the loader up in the air so that I could access this a lot easier. I don't recommend leaving the loader up in the air unless you could block your ramps so that if you ever had a line blow out, the loader's not gonna fall on you. So don't do as I do. Okay, so now that the bonnet is off and the loader is up in the air, I can show you guys where I'm gonna mount this filter or a roundabout area. So I'm gonna probably end up using these bolts here off the loader frame. I'll probably use this one here or this one here. I haven't decided yet. So that eighth inch thick, three inch wide flat stock that I have, what I'll do is I'll cut it at the right length and I'll bend to 90 coming out or going in. I haven't decided yet so that this thing can mount to the top of it. I'll drill a couple holes and throw some bolts through it. This bolt here I would like to use, but I think it might interfere with the tire. I'll have to start it back up and turn the tire um, as I'm doing this so that the tire is at its most traveled to the left so that I can make sure that the tire is not gonna come into contact with the filter. So yeah, that filter is gonna sit something like this in this vicinity here. I'm gonna try to record as much as I can for you guys because I know when I made my exhaust stack, even though it's not quite 100% finished yet, I wasn't able to record myself in the process. I try to make this video better as far as showing you guys step by step as I go along. Okay, I got my creeper, I got my light. I'm gonna lay down and I'm gonna see exactly what size bolt that is on that worm clamp on the original fuel filter. Okay, so I forgot the factory clamps are actually a spring clamp, so you'll need a pair of pliers for that. You'll also need a 10 millimeter socket on a ratchet to loosen that filter bracket. Okay, so I got myself a drain pan. I got my hose pinch off pliers. I got a 10 millimeter socket on an extension, quarter inch ratchet, and I got my pliers. I'm gonna go underneath, pinch off the line coming from the tank, and then I will remove both lines from the filter and then the filter bracket, and lastly, the filter itself. I don't know how much you guys are gonna be able to see, but I'll do my best here. Really tight underneath here. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is loosen up this bracket so I can get these hose clamps off a lot easier. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is pinch off the line coming from the tank to the filter. Okay, now that I got that pinched off, I can use my pliers to remove the clamp. All right, now I'm gonna get my pan ready and try to break loose the first line. Just like that. Let that drain for a minute. Okay, now I can remove the second hose. This right here 
is your factory filter. This is the one that's a son of a gun to change, as you guys can see. I crawl underneath here and I can barely get my hands on anything. These also clog up extremely easily and they do not hold a lot of volume. I just changed this filter in the beginning of the summer last year and I can already tell it's already pretty dark inside there. Okay, now what I'm gonna do while I'm under here is I'm gonna remove this line here from the lift pump. This hose here, you can pretty much just throw it away or save it for something else. I got my roll of 5 16 fuel hose. I'm gonna put a clamp on one end so it's easier for me to do once I get under there. For these fuel line clamps, I need a 932nd socket. I also brought with me the 516 double barp fitting that I'll be installing now. I'm gonna be putting my clamp on the end of the existing hose coming from the fuel tank and putting my double barb fitting in place. This is probably the hardest part of the whole job is getting that old filter off and getting that double barb fitting installed. Okay, so if you guys can see, I got the one end of the double barb fitting inside the hose and I got the clamp on there. I'm gonna now take the new fuel hose that I bought with the clamp pre-installed and put it on the other end. Okay, so if you guys can see that, I got the double barb end fitting installed with both fuel line clamps. So now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna run the rest of this hose up to the front of the tractor to the inlet of our new fuel filter. And then I will be cutting the hose and using the rest of the hose to come out of the outlet of the fuel filter housing. And it'll be going back into our lift pump. Once you're done, you're gonna to wanna to go back down here and zip tie all your lines nice and tight alongside the frame. Try to follow the old existing hoses and harnesses um, of the tractor from Kubota. And this way you will make sure that you have your hose in a, in a spot where it's not gonna get caught on anything. Make sure you stay clear of the drive shaft and any other moving parts. So right now I'm gonna feed this fuel line hose to the front of the tractor. I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna pull it all the way through. Make sure I give myself enough slack so that I can follow all the factory lines. Okay, so now that that's done, what I'm gonna do is mock up where my filter is gonna go because I don't have it mounted yet. I'm gonna cut my hose, but I'm gonna leave it long so that wherever I decide to put my filter, whether it be here or here, I'll make sure I leave myself enough hose. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pick the farthest point that I would have this filter. I'll leave myself a little extra length and cut it and that'll go into the inlet of this filter. And then the other half of this hose is gonna go from the outlet of the filter back to the lift pump. Okay, so I got this hose cut. I got my other half of fuel line here. I'm gonna feed this back through, following the same path that this other line took. Okay, now we gotta go back under the tractor and connect this side to the lift pump. All right, guys, well, I don't know how well you guys can see, but right in front of my pinch off tool here is that double barb fitting. We got our new hose going all the way up to the inlet of our new filter. And now we got the second half of the hose coming out of the outlet of the new filter back through the same way. And all we're gonna be doing is looping back around and coming back into our lift pump. I already have my hose clamp on here so now I just gotta stick it on the lift pump. Okay, so I have my new line on the lift pump and now I'm gonna just bring the spring clamp forward onto the lift pump. Okay, so now I'll pull back the slack on both these lines and now all you're gonna do is zip tie everything. So I'm gonna probably put one zip tie here you can see this is where the Kubota had their factory zip tie 
I'm gonna cut that off. I'll put a zip tie here. I'm gonna zip tie these two together and I'm gonna just stay right in the middle of this frame and I'm gonna continue on zip tying it alongside the OEM fuel lines going from the lift pump to the engine. Once you're done zip tying everything up real nice, you should be all done underneath the tractor. Okay, now I'm going to zip tie my lines so that once I mount the fuel filter, I could pull everything else taut. Okay guys, I don't know if you can see it now, but all my fuel line is now ran. I have it all tucked nice and neat. It's not rubbing or chafing against anything. Um, I feel confident that this would last a long time. Okay, now we're gonna go back up front where we can finish installing our aftermarket fuel filter. Let's see if I can give you guys a quick peek because this is gonna be the last time I show you guys underneath here. Um, okay, so here's our double barb fitting. Right where you see that little brass fitting, that's where our OEM inline fuel filter used to be. So now it's replaced with that double barb fitting. That hose that extends from it is tied together. It follows the existing fuel line going up to the engine, and that's where it comes out the front, where it'll go into the inlet of the filter. Then from the outlet of the filter, it comes back through this hole here. Again, routing with the original fuel line, taking the same path back, where it then wise off and goes into the lift pump. Okay, and that's all there is to it. I'm all done under here. The only thing I have left to do is to remove these hose pinch pliers when I'm done with everything else. Okay guys, so I just did some measuring. The bracket coming off this filter, it comes off about an inch, as you can see. Um, obviously I don't want the ring right up against the loader because then I won't be able to turn it to change the filter. So I want to leave myself some room here. So I want to give myself about an inch and a half off that piece of flat stock that I use when I bend it so that I can mount this. Okay, so if I take an inch and a half, which is about this, and I come down to a five, that's gonna leave that piece of metal right around here. And I believe I can do it without cutting it around these bolts. I'm just gonna leave it off to the right side. That flat stock I'm using is three inches wide, which will be perfect because the face of this bracket is only about two and a half inches wide. So being that that flat stock is three inches wide, I won't even have to cut it the other way. So basically I just gotta cut a piece off that flat stock at five and a half inches. I'm gonna put it in the vise and make my bend. And then I'm gonna mock it up and drill my holes and hopefully I can get this thing mounted right up. Okay, so here's my piece of flat stock that I bought. It's eighth inch thick, which is thin enough that I'll be able to bend it, but yet it's still hefty enough to make as a filter bracket. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure four and a half inches. I'm gonna mark it and cut it. I'm gonna bend over about an inch and a half of it at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm gonna mock it up and see how it fits. If everything looks good, I'll drill my holes and I'll mount it. Okay, there we go, I rounded all the edges. Can't get caught on it, it's no longer sharp. Could run my hand across it without having any issue. Nice and smooth. 
Okay, so that's the piece I'm hoping to use. Um, now I'm gonna put it in a vise and I'm gonna make my one and a half inch bend. I'll be bending it over like this as a 90 degree angle. And that's where that filter will mount. Okay, and there we go. There's my bracket. It actually turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Seems nice and straight. I don't know how well you guys can tell, but turned out really nice, square and straight. Okay, so I got my bracket that I just got done making. Turned out pretty good. Okay, so to give you guys an idea how this is gonna go, I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna put it here or if I'm gonna have it down here. Um, I might use this top bolt here, I might use this bolt. I haven't really decided yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank the wheel all the way to one end. That way I can figure out exactly where I can have this filter without it interfering with the tire. Okay, so now that I got the tire turned, looks like as long as you guys keep it up high, you shouldn't have a problem with it interfering. Um, you could actually use this bolt here or either one of these loader bolts. This nut and bolt here is actually just there for a tie down point for this hydraulic hose. So you could take that off and you could use that as a mounting point as well. I'm probably gonna have mine something like this here. Okay hey guys, as you can see here, I marked out my center, which is right here for that bracket bolt. Now I'm gonna drill a small pilot hole then I'll eventually work myself up to a half inch bit, which I believe is the size of these loader frame bolts. Okay, there's my pilot hole. See if our frame bolt fits. Okay, we're perfect. Okay, let's test fit this. See how I did here. My whole plan was to keep it right between these two top bolts. That's right where I'm at. That way it's nice and centered. As you can see, it's right between these two bolts here. Uh, now, I just gotta make sure I leave myself enough room for the nuts. So I got one nut that's gonna slide under here like this. So there's the one nut. The other nut slides down there. Okay, so I just gotta drill two more holes so that this can get mounted to it. So now I'm gonna bring this back to the bench. I'll mark it and drill it, and uh, we should be all set. Once I know everything fits properly and I got it bolted on, I'll unbolt it and I'll paint it after. Okay guys, so I marked out on my bracket where my new filter housing is gonna go. Okay, so I got a couple marks here. First I found center and then I figured out how far off the bracket I needed to be because you don't want to be right up against it. Otherwise you won't be able to get the filter off when you need to change it because you got to be able to spin that ring. So I got myself a quarter inch or so off of the bracket. I'm gonna drill these holes now and then I could finally test fit this and get the rest of it plumbed in. Okay, those fit good. 
Give this a little test fit real quick. Okay, so this is gonna mount just like that. And see, I got about a quarter inch gap so I can spin that filter off. Underneath, I got just enough room to put a nut on them bolts. So that should work out perfect. Okay, let's get this on the tractor. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount all this up. I'm gonna connect my lines. I'm gonna get it all bled and then I'll probably paint my bracket off camera. Pretty excited, I've had this uh, I've had this filter sitting around for over a week now and I've been really wanting to do this, but I started on that stack and uh, that took me a lot more time than I thought. I mean, that was a very, very challenging job making that stack work. And even though it's not finished yet, at least I can, you know, at least my tractor's back together where I can use it. Found a couple of nylon nuts that I'll be using so that they can't loosen up and I don't lose my fuel filter. Okay, so I'm gonna slide the one nut into place. And I gotta slide the other nut into place. I think I got them in place. Let's see if I can get one started here. Yeah, I got one started. Got my other one started. I just gotta tighten up my main bolt that holds the bracket in place. Okay, that's tight. Okay, now I can tighten down my two top bolts. 13 or a half inch. The nice thing is the way I have that, them holes mounted, is uh, they're so far towards the edge that the nut actually uses the bracket like a stopper. So I don't need to get a wrench in there to hold them. Now for being eighth inch steel, that thing is not moving. There is nothing gonna break that bracket or bend it. Um, and that's one of the reasons I, I rolled it over and bent it the way I did, is that just makes it stronger. So that's on there nice and tight. Now we can finally finish hooking our lines up. Okay, so now as you guys can see, this thing's mounted. It's nice and tight. It feels like it's welded right to the frame. Um, so now that that's all mounted up, we can finally finish up connecting our fuel lines. The one that I left short, that is the one coming from our tank. That's gonna go directly into the inlet of our new filter. So let's hook that one up first. I left myself some length here, so now I can trim it back. Okay, so now I can figure out where I want my hose length to be. Cut this one about right here. Get my hose clamp on. Okay, I'm tightening my clamp up. So now we gotta do our outlet. So our outlet is going directly into the lift pump, which then comes from the lift pump, and that's what goes into this inline filter before it goes into your injection pump. Okay, I'm gonna size this one up. I'm gonna cut it about here. Slide it onto the outlet port. Okay, now we're finally all hooked up. Last thing we need to do is put a little cap on this vent because we won't be using this. You want a piece of quarter inch fuel line, just a short one inch, two inch piece so that you can cover up this nipple. Okay guys, and that's all she wrote for that. So hopefully that's a better view. You guys can see the new fuel filter installed. Um, I now have to bleed out the system. So I'm gonna finally remove those hose pinch pliers so that we can get the system blood. Now we should be all set to bleed the system. Okay, so for anyone who hasn't bled a Kubota BX before, all you gotta do, since it's got an electronic fuel pump or lift pump on it, you don't have to start it, you just turn the key, you let the lift pump prime itself. As it primes itself, it's gonna be sending the fuel up here to your injection pump. 
All you gotta do is loosen this 10 millimeter uh, bolt. And as you loosen it, you'll see the air start coming out of it. And the minute you have a solid stream of fuel flow, you tighten your 10 mil back down and you're ready to start. Okay, so I'm gonna get a 10 millimeter socket on a ratchet. We're gonna crack this loose. So all you gotta do is just crack it loose. I'm gonna turn my ignition on. And now I'm watching for the fuel bowl to fill up. Okay, it's starting to fill up now. It's bleeding all the air out of it. It's got a lot of air in it because it's got to fill that whole bowl up. You can almost hear the pump change tone when it finally uh, when it finally bleeds itself. Okay, now it's good enough. I got a solid stream of flow. Now that we got everything closed back off and tightened up, I'm just gonna turn the key on and let the fuel pump run and just make sure that I don't have any leaks. Okay, so now the fuel pump's running. Everything looks good. Now I'm gonna fire it up. Okay guys, we're all set. I'm gonna lower my loader down. I'm gonna put my hood bonnet back on. Okay guys, and that's all she wrote. Hopefully this helps somebody out who uh, who hasn't done this mod yet. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there who haven't done it yet. It's turned out really good. I just gotta pop that bracket off and paint it at some point. Uh, I'll probably do that tomorrow. I'd also like to see if I can get this nipple out. Um, if it unthreads, I'd like to thread a bolt in instead uh, if I could find the right thread pitch because uh, I don't like this thing sticking out. It looks ugly, um, but other than that, Turned out really good. I'm not too worried about making a guard. I mean, I could make one pretty easily. I could actually come off one of these bolts here and make a guard. Shout out to Paul Short. He made his own guard and uh, he did a he did a fantastic job doing it. Um, it wraps right around a fuel bowl. He's a very good fabricator. I, I really liked how he did his filter um, and his bracket as well. But yeah, I'm really happy with it. I'm glad it's all done. One more thing to knock off the bucket list and one less future problem to worry about. So. Okay, guys, well, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you guys would share these videos with your friends, I'd really appreciate it. I could use all the subscribers I can get so I can keep making videos like this for you guys. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.